All right, everybody, I've got the uh, horizontal stabilizer skin off of the skeleton. Right here, you can see the two smileys that I put in that are pretty aggressive there. They're actually here and one here. There's a very small fifth one, or third one here, and then uh, one that I've already started working out right here, another one up here, and then there's one up here from the other side uh, that I've got to deal with when I flip the skin over. So. The way to flatten these back out, if you intend to reuse the piece and not simply replace it, is to use a spoon. And the best spoon to use is not a kitchen spoon, it's actually a body spoon. So what they use for body work with uh, dollies and spoons and hammers. But I don't have any of those, so I'm actually going to use my wife's Fiesta Ware large serving spoon. And I've used this before on straightening out skins and it actually works quite well. The slightly concave surface of this large spoon actually helps to push these uh, smiley divots kind of back down flat because you have to overbend them past flat to get them to spring back into the flat position. Kind of like when you're forming flanges and things like that, you have to go a little bit further so that it springs back into position. Now the metal here has slightly stretched and that's the problem with trying to straighten body panels, especially made of aluminum is that uh, when you when you bend them in this fashion they do stretch a little bit so you can't put stretched material back in its original position without some sort of waviness but because these ridges are just so very slight they don't cause too many problems when you actually put them under tension and reskin the, the the part now if you were to do this on a section of material that was going to remain completely flat say the the uh, slat surfaces of the fuselage or wings it would be a little bit more pronounced, but you put them under tension, like say on a nose radius or something like that, and they actually have a little bit of curvature to them, it has a tendency to kind of stress that little bit of waviness after you've corrected the uh, smiley. It'll, it'll kind of stress that waviness right out and kind of put it under tension so you don't see it as badly. So this one here, I've already started. You can still see a little bit of it. Um, there's a little bit of a ridge right here yet. That I have to work out right there. This part is actually pretty flat. And then I'll do the same thing over on these ridges where the ridge actually sticks up slightly. I'll actually put the surface of the spoon right on top of the ridge and just try to work it back down into the flat part of the material. The camera is going to jiggle a little bit just because of where I'm at. So I know you can't see this real well because of the lighting, but uh, I'm feeling right here where these high ridges are and I'm on the flat wood table. And I'm just going to kind of follow along the axis of where these smileys uh, pretty much are. And just put a little bit of pressure. I'm not going too much. And I don't want to end up stippling it, even though the spoon is flat. I don't want to stipple in it, you know, and make it worse. Anything like that. So what I'm doing here is just kind of, kind of rolling the metal back into position. I don't want to drag the spoon across. And that actually to the eye, and you can feel just a little bit of ripple in there. But to the naked eye, there's very, very little problem there. So that one's pretty good. I'm not going to mess with it any further because it'll make it worse. So moving on to this one, this one's probably the most pronounced of them all. It's kind of a U shape. And I'm going to try to follow the contour of that right around it. And just kind of work the material back into its normal position as much as I can. Uh, without overstraining the material back the other direction as much as possible. Now the, the work surface is a soft pine plywood top. And that actually works pretty well because you get a little bit of give on the back side of it when you're doing this and it works pretty well. It gives you that little bit of extra wiggle room to have the material draw back down into its, because remember you have to go past the horizontal plane, you have to go slightly past it so it springs back into position. And so the soft pine gives you just a little bit of flex uh, for that. So this is actually pretty good. If I run my fingers across it, on this one in particular, I can't even really feel that there's any waviness. This one over here, just very slightly, so we're going to do very gently these other ones as well. 
and this one's almost this one's so gentle it's really almost not even worth trying to do but I want to take any of that out that I can and again a real like automotive body like dolly or spoon that would be a little bit better for this but um, I've gotten pretty pretty darn good results you just don't want to use something small like a teaspoon it's just too small and has a sharper curve so this is actually a serving spoon and it works pretty well and we'll get over here to these ones again just kind of running the spoon along that high ridge where it's flexed up a little bit and I, I, I go longitudinally and then I rock it back and forth along the short short edge and that seems to give it the best you know flat surface so this is not the best or perfect way to do this I mean really if you want to if you want a hanger queen, you want a perfect looking airplane, you really need to remake these parts. But this is a bush plane, so it's going to get beat up anyway. <laughs> and although I'd like for it not to start out that way, I'm just simply not going to restart the project on some of these things. This really trying to match drill every little, you know, once you've match drilled a skin in particular, trying to then recut a new skin and rematch drill a new skin is just really really difficult I've got strap duplicators which are the tool that you need to do that with but again that would be an, a, a really good substantial amount of work and uh, the uh, chances of making errors when you're when you're match drilling a, a skin to holes that already exist is really pretty high so I don't want to mess with that too much. And this method here is going to be acceptable for me. Like I said before in the previous segment, it's a really good chance that, you know, a lot of this is either going to be covered up by a fairing and or um, kind of disappear under tension. So I don't know how well you can see it in this video or not, but this is where that one smiley was. And you can see now it's, it's much flatter, hardly visible at all. A little bit of a divot there that's actually more of a scratch so you can still see it in the reflection you see the light kind of training down into it as it waves across the surface but by touch it's very very flat this one's a little bit more pronounced here because there's more rippling effect uh, this one here kind of the same thing you see the light reflection rippling across where that divot started and here it's kind of the same thing you see that ripples but if you look right down at the metal, it's very flat. Now, you know, painting over this or putting a vinyl wrap over this or whatever has the potential to cover it up, but it will, it will be there. You know, if the light catches it just right, you're gonna see it, but it's not uh, nearly as pronounced. And it's uh, you know, pretty well, these, these dents are worked out. So uh, that's about as far as I wanna go with these anymore, messing around with them and it's likely to make it worse. Uh, you can also take like a ball peen hammer, a lightweight ball peen hammer, or a body hammer and try to smooth this out even further. But again, uh, pounding on it is going to compress the metal and, and then stretch it outward even more. So you could just end up making the problem worse. So uh, that's pretty much it for taking little minor smileys out of your, your sheet metal. The other cautionary portion of this is that when I go to reattach this to the uh, skeleton and go to bend this back down over the the other side of the horizontal stabilizer skeleton i have to be extra careful now because the metal is going to have a um a tendency to want to kink back into these these divots that are still somewhat present so it'll be a two maybe even three person job to make sure that that metal curves along the axis that it's supposed to without putting these smileys back in and um we'll go from there but so far, so good on this. I'm, I'm pleased with the way that this is smoothed out a little bit. It's, it's much less pronounced. Again, still going to be there, but it's just a, cos a, a slight cosmetic blemish that I'll just have to live with. So if you want to have a perfect looking airplane, you've got to remake parts that this, is ha this happens to, and there's just no way around it. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe, and let me know if you have any requests for future video content. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck with your projects.